Hey guys, welcome back to our third and final installment of our River Run, where we brought this 1999 Carver 356 from Seneca, Illinois, down to Grafton, Illinois, on the Illinois River, and then up the mighty Mississippi, all the way to Prairie du Chien. It's been a great trip so far, with really our only problem is not being able to find stops to get fuel, because we're so early in the season but the weather's been really, really good. But that's about to change. You see, we came down the river and got to Grafton, had a great time there on a Saturday night, but now we've got to go back up north, up against the Mississippi River current. Fuel is gonna to continue to be a problem. We're gonna have some issues with the engine and the transmission on the boat. And we're actually going to have a big problem in Quincy, Illinois, that we'll get to in a bit. So buckle in, sit back, enjoy the video, and let's start our journey up the Mississippi River. So we got them do our makeshift bimini. So I built this nice little, I put the poles up, made a temporary. Temporary frame using the strap and tape. And then I'm gonna heat shrink this thing this the white plastic from the winter storage on it because they're talking snow on tuesday who would have thought so there's my finished bimini top ad hoc the engineer nerding me took the plastic from the shriek wrap from winter storage because this boat didn't come with canvas so we are Rigging it up until we can get it back home and get the bimini and the canvas completed. So, there it is. That's going to keep us dry from the rain and in case we have snow back in Iowa. Finished product. Uh, one note, that strapping tape does burn. <laughs> Unlike the nylon that you use um, when, you, uh, when you winterize them. So got to be careful of that, so I'm like, I'm done. The sun will heat that up. It'll shrink up even tighter than that, but uh, that'll keep us dry, hopefully, and keep me out of the sun as well, because uh, I'm pretty sunburnt. So. so I finished up the Bimini, and by Sunday at noon, we were on the water. We had to go two miles upriver to Port St. Charles Harbor to get gas. And as you can see, going up against that four-knot current on the Mississippi is quite different from going with the current down the Illinois. It was getting to be a lot rougher, the weather was starting to turn, and you can see the overspray hitting our windshields. We had to go 60 miles that first day to our first stop of the night, the Two Rivers Marina in Rockport, Illinois. We didn't get in until late that night, and the marina didn't open up for gas until noon the next day, so we left without fueling up. Again, another mistake. That meant we had to get to Hannibal to the city boat harbor for fuel. The problem is the Quimby's cruising guide showed that there's gas stocks and that they had fuel. What we didn't know is that for the last two years, the city has been rebuilding their docks and they did not have fuel. We ended up finding a local that shuttled us in his truck to the local Casey's convenience store and we got about 50 gallons of fuel, just enough to get us to the next town of Quincy. It was only 18 miles for us to get to our overnight marina in Quincy, but the weather was getting worse. The winds were kicking up and the cold was really starting to set in. On top of that, we were having starboard side transmission problems with overheating and had to shut it down to cool off. So we came into Lock and Dam 21 in Quincy, running only on our starboard side engine. Unfortunately, there was already a barge at the Lock and Dam and it was gonna take two hours for the barge to get through. I requested that we tied up to the wall of the lock, but the wind was too strong and our anchor was not going to hold. The wind blew what was blowing my bow around towards the shore, and with no forward momentum, the rudder was absolutely helpless. So what happened is, unfortunately, the wind blew us into the shore. I knew there was nothing I could do, so I put everything in neutral and shut down the engines to avoid damage. We were lucky that the shore was soft mud, and we hit the shore and got stuck in the mud. 
So after some colorful words, I got on the radio and told the lock that I had run aground. They told me to stay right there and it was probably the best place for me because of the weather and that they would get back to me. So after about an hour and a half, the barge was through and they told me that the Quincy Fire and Rescue had been called to pull me out of the mud. So as you can see from the picture, they brought their boat out and yes, they pulled us off the shore. We uh, hooked them up to the back of the boat and we pulled it out back first so we wouldn't damage any of the props or the rudders. Uh, I asked them how much, they told me no, no fee, this is what they do for a living, which I was very thankful for and we were able to continue on our journey. So it was only a half mile up to the Art Keller Marina in Quincy. We were glad to be there. It was definitely getting very dark, cold, windy, and we were never happier to get back into the marina. Get tied up, use the bathroom, relax, have dinner and have a beverage, and wait for the next day. All right, we are in Quincy, Illinois. And I'm actually parked at the marina last night to get out of the uh, snow, actually. Uh, crazy cold for the end of April, but uh, we're a little snow event, so we tucked into Quincy for the night. Snow turned into rain. It's about 11.30 noon. Um, we're going to top off with fuel, but we've ran out of gas filters, and I don't feel comfortable moving forward. So we've been swapping them out about every two days, trying to work out the bad gas uh, in the tanks. We drained them as far as we could with a pump, but uh, we're still having some issues where it seems like swapping them out every two days seems to, uh, the engines seem to improve. Get her back uh, home, we may have to work on the injectors, but um, note to self, a scooter or a bicycle wouldn't take up much room on the uh, boat and would be, you know, times like this where I got to walk two miles to a marine store would be really awesome. There's no Uber in Quincy and there's no taxi in Quincy. And by the way, I'm not shaving until we get the boat home. So comment below. Two miles, I'm probably uh, half a mile or more to go, but we're going to probably try to buy six gas gas and fuel filters, oil separator, water separators. Anyway, I'll talk to you when we get there. So Tuesday was really cold, but we made it to Keokuk and officially entered the state of Iowa. With a few hours of light left, we pushed on to Burlington and came into Bluff Harbor Marina at mile marker 404. So far, we had traveled 185 miles in three days. So Wednesday morning was much nicer and the sun came out. We gassed up and made it all the way to Fairpoint Marina and Restaurant in Muscatine, Iowa. Another 60 miles closer to home, but once again was running short on fuel and coming in after dark. As you can see, my wife spent a lot of time on the phone calling ahead to marinas to making sure we could get gas. By noon on Thursday, we had made it to the Quad Cities and the Lindsay Park Yacht Club. We were excited to fuel up and finally make it to a familiar area only about an hour and a half from our home in Cedar Rapids. Yeah, so I'm filming, we got narrow buoys, all right. Almost 4,300 RPMs. Not quite. A little lagging over there. But running good right now. Somewhere between the Quad Cities and Clinton.
By Thursday night, we had made it to Clinton and the city marina. This is a really nice marina owned and run by the city. They have a great shower. They've got a restaurant. So we had a much needed relaxing dinner and drinks. Friday was looking to be our last day on the water. We had a fuel and lunch stop in Dubuque before picking up our friends, Scott and Kim, in Guttenberg, Iowa, for the last 30 miles of our journey. It was great being back in our home pool. We pulled into our marina around 9.15 and tied our boat up to our new home at our slip. In all, our trip lasted eight days, 20 lock and dams, and 670 miles, an average of 83 miles per day and over $4,000 in fuel costs. So that's it, that's our trip. I hope you enjoyed the videos. If you haven't watched the other ones, please click on them and check out parts one and two, as well as the introduction of this 99 Carver 356. We spent the summer really enjoying in the boat and doing some improvements, and those are gonna be the next videos that I start putting out. So if you like old boats, you like carvers, you like restoring boats, please check us out and come back and I'll see you next time right here. Thanks for watching.